everyone, welcome to another video! If you're new here, hi, welcome! My name is Rit, I'm a watercolor and mixed media artist. I love watercolors, they make me very very happy. And on this channel I share my watercolor adventures. Uh, yes, I've been a little bit MIA, thank you for sticking with me and being here. I went to Israel, where I'm from. I am currently live in Austria and have been for the last 10 years. But I went back to be there for my family. Um, yeah, my brother had had to go, like, had to have major surgery. And obviously it was very difficult for everyone involved. And... Yeah, I, in my <laughs> previous life, <laughs> before <laughs> I started painting, I was a doctor. I worked for several years in a medium-sized hospital in Israel, uh, in an internal department, internal medicine department. And I, you know, that was very, very difficult <laughs> and very stressful. <laughs> and yet I would do that any day, um, you know, instead of being in the hospital with someone you love. It's, it's very difficult and I really feel for all the people who, I feel for everyone, I feel for the staff, I feel for, you know, the doctors, the nurses, and of course I feel for the families that many times are not aware of everything that the medical staff has to deal with. And vice versa. It's it's just very, very difficult to be there uh, on either side and kind of just deal with, you know, certain things that are just uh, uh, the way that they are. You know, things take time and uh, hospitals have their own pace and nothing ever happens immediately. Uh, and a lot of things don't need to happen immediately just because someone wants them to. And, you know, not every person has their own doctor and nurse and, you know, full staff. But, um, yeah, certain things do need to happen. And it's just the system is always uh, starving for, you know, more, more personnel, more, more of everything. And, yeah, I will stop here and... I will move on to talking about art, but yeah, that that was a very, very short update. Um, hopefully things will work out. It's, it's rough stuff. Okay, so I haven't painted in, you know, the whole like week or week and a half when I wasn't at home. I didn't take anything with me because basically I was the whole week in the hospital pretty much. And yeah, so it's always hard for me to go back. I feel like it's, you know, like you go to the gym and f like when you go every day, it's somehow it gets into your routine. And for me, it's the same with painting. And then when something happens, I don't know, you get a cold or you go on vacation, actually getting back to that routine is for some reason extremely difficult. And that's how I feel about painting, but I have learned after years of, you know, aspiring to do this daily that there's no magic trick. The best thing is just to sit down, grab some stuff you love and start doing something. And I actually, the, I think one of the, like, probably the only fun thing I did in this visit in Israel was that... Uh, I went with my lovely, clever niece to a uh, 16-year-old niece. Uh, we went together to the Tel Aviv Museum of Art, Modern Art. And, and yeah, she also sketches and paints and her uncle is an artist and his partner is an artist. So she has the artistic vibes from both sides <laughs> of her parents family and you know i don't have any formal education i mean i've been always interested in art and i've 
always gone to like museums whenever I visit a place with interesting museums I try to see them but I have no you know I don't know what I'm talking about <laughs> it's like I may not know much about art but I know what I like and yeah and it was really interesting because I think in modern art as opposed to you know probably everything you can find in a museum from you know 19 hundreds and back or even like 1920s and back I think the skill is very obvious it's like very obvious to see that the painter had skills when you see that uh, in a museum I'm not talking about like some um, you know some weird galleries or something like that but like major museums and you know you can connect with the art you can like the style you can like the the you know, part that they belonged to. Personally, I was always a fan of the expressionists and the surrealists. And um, yeah, and it's like very obvious. But with modern art, it's kind of like many times I'm like, I don't get it. And I don't know if the curator of this gallery or exhibition, um, you know, if if we have anything in common, like I don't think these things should be in a museum and <laughs> yeah but anyway that's I think for me that's always kind of a part of the experience of uh, going to a modern art museum and yeah and sometimes it's not about like the technical skill and I say this as someone I can I feel like I have a very positive response to many paintings that don't require um very technical skills. I love colors and brush strokes and very expressive paintings. So it's not a must for me, but then certain things I still don't get. But what I do enjoy in these kind of, in certain exhibitions where you get a chance to see, I went to such an exhibition in the uh, modern, the Leopold Museum, I think it was in Vienna, which is also modern art. And they had kind of a um, a sketches of Hundert Wasser, which is a very known Austrian artist. Uh, they had an exhibition. And now when I went to the Tel Aviv Museum, they also had an exhibition of an artist, which I will now stop recording and check <laughs> for his name. Okay, so that was much, much harder than I thought. The artist's name, which I could not find anywhere on the Tel Aviv uh, Museum website, is Alexander Calder or Calder. I have no idea, but he is, wait, I'll tell you. He was, he died in 1976, was an American sculptor and artist, most famous for inventing abstract sculptures he called mobiles. And yeah, the exhibition had a few of his uh, sculptures, which were very impressive. And then there were also like pieces of art and sketches that were <laughs> from the school of my three-year-old could do it. <laughs> and I say that as a very um, frustrated <laughs> kind of modern artist that I, you know, I mean, who knows, maybe my artwork will also, you know, maybe my uh, grandkids or their grandkids will walk around in the Tel Aviv Museum of Art and see my blobs of pink watercolor uh, hanging on the walls there. But yeah, it's, it's always, okay, I'm going to say it. It's just encouraging to see well-known artists make paintings or, you know, sketches that are kind of underwhelming. And it was the same exactly with Hundertwasser. He painted all kinds of messes on brown paper bags and his, you know, artwork and architecture is incredible. And yeah, so I find it encouraging. I find it motivating and it just, to me, it seems like, you know, when you look at a body of work of an artist and if that artist becomes very famous and, you know, all of his sketches and early works and weird works become, you know, uh, of interest, then I, it just helps me to see kind of the fuller picture and not just the highlights, you know, not just the Mona Lisa, 
but also everything around it and it gives me hope and it encourages me to keep painting and just put try to make something authentic i think you know i'm lucky to live in a time where abstract art i'm not gonna say conceptual art because my art is just not conceptual it's very ooh pretty lines ooh pretty paint that sort of thing <laughs> so <laughs> but i think i'm lucky that you know we live in a time where you know first of all everyone kind of has have access to everything but uh, also that kind of modern art or let's say more minimalistic art or abstract art is appreciated and is kind of, you know, legitimate and not necessarily looked down at, upon, you know what I mean. And then I was just like, okay, I'm just going to open my sketchbook and I'm just going to grab some supplies and I'll start painting. I started with, I just wanted to put some pencils on paper, put some paint on paper and try to find colors that make me happy, that give me the feels, <laughs> because I found for me that that is most of the times that's kind of key to making something that I enjoy making and looking at so that's what i was doing here i'm using i will try to list everything below but yeah i it, it's always like a lot and i end up forgetting stuff so the sketchbook is if you are here last summer you know all about the sketchbook it's from fabriano it's very difficult to find but i did find one shop called pens in the UK, I want to say, that carry it. I don't know if they still carry it, but this sketchbook has some sort of magical paper that is thin on one hand, which I enjoy in a sketchbook. It makes me feel like it's not like super fancy and I can really, you know, make ugly art in it, but it. I don't know, it just handles watercolors like a dream. I don't know how Fabriano did it, but they did. It's amazing, it's fantastic. Those of you that have purchased it, I've heard from some of you, well, those of you that got, like, that gave me feedback were as amazed as I was <laughs> by this paper. And yeah, if you're on the hunt for a very beautiful sketchbook, this would be a wonderful present. I will try to remember to link it, but if I forget, then go to Cult Pens and look for Fabriano's sketchbooks. How is it called? Vergatone, I want to say, maybe. I don't know. I like the white one and the blue one, but they also have a pretty red and orange covers. Okay, so that was sketchbook. What I do like about that, um, like the paper, specifically with the subject of like a beach scene the paper in that journal is kind of has an ivory tint now the paper that i'm using is very very white and i do think it fits that whole vibe of like those summer hazy days so i'm thinking maybe next time i'm at the art store i will look for some larger sheets of paper that actually have that kind of cream or ivory color um, that Calder dude also used really nice kind of light brown mocha creamy paper for some of his artwork and I really liked it so yeah I might uh, I, I did enjoy that okay so here I just grabbed a piece of paper and I kind of just decided to sketch something different i had in my head kind of the thoughts about tel aviv the buildings there tel aviv is known for its bauhaus architecture and it is lovely i really like it uh, it's very i mean you know it's nice to live in europe and see all the like grand ar architecture that you can see in like vienna or budapest or uh, places like that even in the town nearby where i am which is graz it's not as grand as vienna but definitely classic european style 
And then you go somewhere like Tel Aviv where everything is like 100 years old or younger. And yeah, it's just more modest, uh, kind of low key. Most of what is built in Israel was just built fast out of necessity. But the whole like Bauhaus architecture is just very, very lovely. And I really like the style and not that in this painting you can you know you can't look at it and say oh that is some Bauhaus stuff from Tel Aviv <laughs> no <laughs> but that's kind of like what I had in my mind as I was sketching I just you know thought about kind of the town the colors this like the sea so it's just a, a little bit of a mess but yeah that's 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 what happened and I'm okay with it. Okay, the brush that I'm using, I just, I'll, I said it in the previous video and I'll say it quickly because I don't want you to miss out. This is a handmade brush by Tracy Lebenzon. It is my all-time favorite brush. If I had to stay with one brush, this would be it. Or it's a uh, big sister, which I've shown in other videos uh, for larger sizes. But this one is perfection. I'll give you all the details below. Mine has four centimeter bristles or four and a half centimeter. I know that there are like a lot of options. So check below for the length of the bristles. And the reason I'm telling you is that August is the last chance to get a 20% discount of these brushes when you use my name, Irit, I-R-I-T, uh, when you check out from Tracy's shop in September that discount will go down to 10%. So if you're on the fence, if you wanted to try, I highly suggest, you know, do it now, take advantage of the discount and uh, yeah, let's get back to the painting. So what did, I wanted to say something else that escaped my mind right now because I was distracted by brush, <laughs> brush sales. <laughs> and what did I want to say? I don't know, but anyway, it was um, it was fun to paint this, and oh oh yes, I remembered. Okay, there was another exhibition in the museum of an Israeli artist, and his kind of thing is he paints the back of famous paintings. So it's kind of weird for me. It's kind of on the border of this is like a gimmick and. Yeah, I um, I don't really, like, this is not something I really appreciate or kind of like speaks to me personally. However, there was one of the pieces there that it was again like a painting of a back of a canvas. And there was kind of a conversation that I guess he had, the artist or someone, I don't know, with an artist. So one was like a poet and the other one was an artist. And the poet or the writer comes and visits the artist in his studio and the artist is working on a canvas and the canvas has sardines painted on them. And the writer asks the artist, like, why did you paint sardines? And he's like, I felt that's what the painting needed. And then the writer goes home and he starts to think about the color orange and he starts writing and he keeps on writing and he writes and he writes and there's, yeah. And then he goes again to his friend's studio and the painting is still there with no sardines. He asks his artist friend, what happened to the sardines? And the artist says, yeah, it was just like too much. It didn't feel right. The writer goes back home and, you know, writes, writes pages and pages with the color orange in his mind. And when he finishes writing, there's nothing about the color orange or orange in the writing. And then later he goes to a gallery and he sees uh, his friend's painting hanging on the wall and the name is Sardines. And I maybe butchered <laughs> this whole story. <laughs> But I just, I really loved that because it kind of, it also kind of made sense for me when, you know, many times you see a piece of artwork in a museum and, you know, let's say it's a red blob and the writing will be something like, I don't know, 
a bridge over <laughs> the river, something like this, and you're like, I don't get it. <laughs> but I can totally relate to that. So, you know, what is in your mind or my mind when I'm painting and what is then actually on paper or what people see, uh, they don't have to be connected and that's okay. And it's just a different process, you know? Um, it's not like, okay, I want to paint a street in Paris and I paint a street in Paris. So yeah, it's just fun to see those things outside. Most of the time I just sit in my room in the little village where I live and, you know, with my thoughts and my art supplies. And it's just nice to go out into the world and go into a museum and yeah, see these things. And be encouraged that you don't have to have everything figured out. And this is a process. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you soon in another one. Keep on painting, keep on creating, and just do what makes you happy. Bye.